In our work, we try to encompass the poisoning attack problem inside a broader uh, question called a Byzantine fault tolerance. This is Elmadi El Hamdi, a PhD student of the IC school at TPFL. And Byzantine fault tolerance very quickly has to do with uh, situations where you would like a group of agents, they can be humans or computers, uh, come up with a common decision robustly, even though some, some members of the group are malicious or misbehaving. Let's give an example. Let's say you have a group of social media accounts behaving. Whenever they behave by liking or disliking or commenting positively or negatively on some video, uh, you infer that this should make you recommend more or less the video on this topic. And uh, imagine you take the average behavior. So the problem with the average behavior is that you can pull it whenever you, wherever you want. So it's just like, think of it uh, as numbers. If we are suggesting a price for the taxation of our city and we are voting, I decide, I propose three, you propose 2.9, and she proposes 3.2, she proposes 3.4, and he proposes 3.9. And then we take the average proposal, it's maybe 3.6. Now, taking such an average is an extremely widespread approach in machine learning. But what if there is someone in the group proposing a thousand or proposing minus a thousand. So we say, no, we don't need to tax, uh, to put a tax on citizens. We should give them a thousand percent of the money they earn. So it's so something that like, if we take the average of a thousand and three, 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 it would be maybe 300 or 400. Uh, so so, so a, a single malicious player could pull the average. We say that averaging is not Byzantine fault tolerant, since a single malicious agent, commonly known as a Byzantine, can completely upset the computation of the network of agents. So what's a Byzantine fault tolerant alternative to averaging? The alternative is to take the median. So if I propose 2.9, you propose 3, she proposes 3.4, he proposes 2.7, 3.6, etc. And then one proposes 1000, the median is still 3.4 because the median is robust to a minority of Asians trying to pull it out. Now, using medians is a classical solution to Byzantine fault tolerant distributed computing, but it cannot be applied directly to machine learning. In fact, the setting of machine learning has several specificities that make classical distributed computing solutions inadequate. Byzantine uh, resilience in machine learning is easier for one reason and extremely harder than classical Byzantine resilience for another reason. Let's start with the first, um, first reason. It's, uh, it's a bit easier because you know what you want to agree on. So, for example, you have a group of people who want to agree on which policy to follow for uh, ruling their city. You don't know what is the best policy to rule the city. So you don't know what you should agree on. Uh, here, we know that we want to agree on, for example, if you are minimizing an error for an algorithm, we want to agree on what we call the gradient, the true gradient of the error function. That's, that makes the problem, uh, that, that gives you a first direction to tackle the problem. However, the second part is uh, way more challenging. It makes, a, it makes a machine, Byzantine resilience in machine learning way harder than the classical settings where people wanted to uh, do agreement on simple values like what is the price of uh, this bike or what is the good uh, taxation level for our city. So this is an, a simple number. Uh, and in machine learning, we never decide on simple numbers. We agree on very high dimensional vectors. And by very high dimensional, like the dimensionality can reach 10 to the power 11, like 10 to 100 billion. And uh, agreeing on something that is highly dimensional is extremely hard. And it gives a lot of leeway, a lot of margin of attack for malicious uh, agents. Because, because you can hide, you have a lot of space to hide in high dimension. This is very well known for machine learning. And this is very well known in actually any um, research direction where you deal with the high dimensional uh, uh, objects. This is called the curse of dimensionality. 
In fact, a previous work in distributed computing suggested that high-dimensional distributed computing was almost hopeless. There was a very good paper by Hammurabi and uh, Maurice Herrely uh, in 2013 that showed, for example, that approximate agreement in high dimension is optimal uh, in n to the power d. n is the number of agents and d is the dimensionality of the vector they want to decide on. And they have some optimality results that are a bit depressing. For example, you need a linear number of correct processes in the dimension. So if the dimension is 10 to the power e is a billion, you need something in the order of a billion correct processes to have a, a, an, an agreement. So, so the, 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 the lower bound on the number of correct processes is very... Um, uh, very high and the, 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 the bound on the, the, the number of steps you have to do locally is exponentially in the dimension. In their case, uh, they concluded the paper by saying that t typically we would like, uh, like robots or drones to agree on a position to meet, like a fleet of drones or a fleet of robots in the floor. So D is two or three, the plane or the three-dimensional space. So in D is two and three, their solution is practical. But in machine learning, D is a billion. So you, sh you shouldn't use research, like you shouldn't look at the classical Byzantine resilience where you want to do agreements. But yeah, you would, you would like to use the first part. You know that you agree on a gradient. So that you don't need to do those kind of um, uh, agreements. So how did Mehdi and his co-authors tackle Byzantine fault-tolerant machine learning? First step in our approach to tackle the problem of poisoning attack under the Byzantine resilience umbrella is to look for aggregation rules that behave like a median in high dimension. So people behave, generate gradients, so generate a suggestion to update your model of how to recommend, and then you would like to aggregate all those behaviors with something that looks like a median. Now, evidently, there will be much more to say about Medi's work, which has been published in a series of three papers at NIPS 2017 and ICML 2018. We will discuss all of this on Zettabytes, but that will have to wait for another time. So when it's a good thing, the computer system amplifies the good thing. When it's bad, a bad mistake, the computer system amplifies it, and the consequences can be very drastic because we do rely today on algorithms. An example of a killer robot that is already deployed around us and already affecting people uh, is the recommender system of social media. Uh, 